are settlement coming out of Denmark to talk about uh, learnings moving from AVM to EVM and back again. My name is Stefan, I'm the CCO of Settlement, so I'm doing all the sales and commercial stuff and raising money. Yeah, and my name is Liv, I'm a software engineer with Settlement, working as head of customer integrations, but also the one doing all the algorithm integrations and functionalities. And the next 20 minutes, we're here to talk about uh, what Settlement does and why we use blockchain and algorand. But most importantly, we're here to talk a little bit about the learnings we had when we were moving from Algorand to EVM and back again, uh, and all the struggles we found and why we essentially uh, like building on Algorand uh, a lot better. So, yeah. So, Settlement is a payment institution licensed out of Denmark. Uh, we passported our license through all of EEA. Basically, we help platforms and marketplaces distribute money safely. So they receive third-party funds. They cannot have that on their own bank accounts. So we provide them with an escrow service or wallet infrastructure to help distribute all the funds. So it's fiat currency, not crypto or stable coins, but old school euros and DKK right now. So it's a multi-currency wallet where we together with Algorand and our banking partner can on a two week basis add all the currencies that we want to. Yeah, and uh, one of the things is like we do is also that the, the platform can automate their payments through their backend. So we have an API that makes it easy to create accounts, create payments. Um, they sign it in our app and they use the dashboard, but essentially they don't see that it's blockchain being used under the hood. It's just the accounting ledger we use. It's not really important for them. The important thing is just that we make it super easy for them to distribute uh, the funds in a compliant manner. So why blockchain? And I think to take it back to 2020, when we got our license, um, we did a test with the Danish Financial Supervisory Authority in the regulatory sandbox, where we tried to show that uh, blockchain can be used to uh, offer businesses to settle business-to-business -business transactions um, in real time with real fiat money on chain. And this is uh, what the financial authority came out with, that blockchain technology can provide efficient infrastructure for payment services. And they drew it up in this very nice, funny, professional-looking diagram here with some stick man on it, um, kind of showing what essentially we are, uh, like the traditional payment infrastructure that it has like a lot of intermediaries, it takes a long time, I think we all know that, it costs a lot of money versus using blockchain infrastructure to settle payments. So this is definitely why we're using blockchain. We think it's a better accounting ledger infrastructure for building payment service or infrastructure in the 21st century. Uh, we get like instant reconciliation, lower fees, transparency, atomic transactions, um, all this, uh, yeah, with blockchain. So why Algorand? Um, actually, we started out by building on Algorand uh, in 2020, uh, and we did that because uh, Algorand removes a category of risk, which is nice for regulated payments. It's efficient, it has a high GBS, uh, near instant finality or instant finality, and there's no forking we have to take care of, uh, and also, very importantly, low cost and fixed cost. So we preferred Algorand to do this with, but unfortunately, uh, our EMI provider uh, pulled the rug uh, and didn't support AVM uh, at a certain point and kind of forced us to move to EVM. And after having spent around six months on EVM trying to migrate all the functionality and facing a lot of mounting challenges, uh, we decided that it was actually easier for us to move back to AVM and build the entire on and off ramping ourselves. So we are here to talk a little bit about, yeah, like we found 10 learnings um, that we wrote up, uh, which was the challenges and the things we really liked about building on AVM rather than EVM. So I'm gonna walk through those uh, today. I'm gonna talk a little bit about three or four of them and then go a little bit faster over the rest, but you can ask questions if you wanna hear more about it. But I think overall for us it meant uh, less smart contract engineering on AVM, which meant a lot less risk for us, a lot less security overhead, 
and a lot less development time. I think we estimated that on AVM, our development time was like 5% of our total time. And on, uh, on, on AVM, it was like 5%, and on EVM, it would be like 30 to 50% of our, of our development resources we had to spend on building the same things. So yeah, I'm going to start with talking about nonsense gas fees and pre-signing, uh, starting with the latter. One of the things that settlement is kind of offering our customers is the ability to set up transactions in advance that they want to trigger in the future when a specific event happens. So a good example could be that a platform allows you to buy a service from a supplier. Uh, and when you do this, the platform sets up the payment to pay the supplier for the service, but only when the service has actually been provided. So they want to be able to set this up and then they know for sure that this will be triggered when the service has been provided. They don't have to look at it again uh, and handle the payment when the service has been uh, delivered. And this was really hard for us to build on EVM. So the way we would do it there would be to deploy a smart contract for every payment with like the conditions for this uh, payment. And essentially it would either have to store the client's funds or be allowed to uh, pull funds from the client's account. And the scary thing about that was that we would have a lot of smart contracts for a lot of payments on chain that would or would not uh, be triggered in the future. And it was just super scary to have that attack surface on chain. Uh, also, we had to pay the gas cost for deploying all these payments that may never uh, actually have to happen in the future. Um, yeah, which was a big disadvantage. Uh, on EVM, on the other hand, it was super, super easy for us to build this functionality because we can use delegated logic signatures, which is a way that the customer signs a transaction that says, or is, it, they make a signature that says, settlement are allowed to pay this amount to this account from our account. So it has like bumper reels on, like we can only send it to a specific account and only a specific amount. They can sign this offline uh, and we store this signature in our backend, and then we only use it if we actually end up triggering the payment or if they end up triggering the payment. So we don't have to interact with the blockchain, we don't have to pay uh, gas costs, we don't have to um, have that attack surface, and uh, we also improve the privacy by not having all these payments out there. So yeah, that was a huge one for us. And secondly, we ran into nonsense and transactions ordering. I don't know if, I'm be I believe that everyone that has worked with EVM at least knows uh, what a big pain it is to work with nonsense. But essentially, uh, nonsense on EVM ensures that you can't double spend a transaction. That means every transaction has to have a, a number that's unique to that one. So my transaction is called uh, giving number one, and I can only execute number two, three, four uh, when number one has actually been executed. So I have to, uh, execute the transactions in that specific order. This wasn't feasible for us because as we just said, our, com uh, our customers wanted to uh, set up their payments in advance and we don't know which specific order we want to execute them in. And on AVM, we simply didn't have to deal with this because they use leases instead, which is just a uh, unique identifier that you generate and uh, provide so it can be double spended. You have the same security, but no strict uh, ordering needed. And lastly here, we have the dynamic gas fees, which on EVM, it's super complex to predict the gas fee. And if the network is congested, one transaction can end up blocking all the current or future transactions until you resolve this one transaction. And that meant we had to build like retry functionality uh, for our customers to resign these transaction. And it became like a headache to build a good user experience about that. And on AVM, again, we didn't have to worry about this. It's a fixed 0.001 algo fee for each transaction. Uh, and it gives us a simpler cost estima estimation and no blocking. And I think uh, that's also something Stephen knows about, that it's super important for us to know how much does it cost for us to make transactions? Like, what is the cost for our customers to do a transaction? Because it's impossible to make a budget if you don't know how much it will cost you to, to do these transactions. So for us, that's been super, super important. 
And I think overall, these three things was uh, a big blocker to actually implement what we had on AVM uh, on EVM. Next, we have some built-in features on EVM, which means that these features just comes out of the box on AVM. We don't have to build any smart contract to do the same things, making us uh, risk a lot less, like we don't have the attack surface, we don't have to manage the security, and uh, we can kind of trust that it works and is super secure. And here we have multisig for one, and that's super useful in the payment space because a lot of the processes today means that several actors have to approve a specific payment in order for it to go through, for example, if it's like above a certain limit or something. Super, super useful for regular businesses to have this. And on EVM, we had to either build our own smart contract to do this or actually rely on a third party like Gnosis Safe. And that was super scary because we have to rely on them being super secure. Uh, we also still had to spend a lot of time on figuring out how does their product work, is it secure, everything. And on AVM, it just came built in. It was super easy for us to use. Then we have asset management, which is also a thing that's super easy to build on AVM. And you have the ability to configure the asset to uh, allow you to freeze and claw back the asset. And that's... Uh, and this um, requirement for a financial institute to be able to do that. Uh, if, for example, a client is uh, under sanctions or there is any suspicious activity, we have to be able to freeze the funds. And that just came built in with EBM. Uh, super, super easy. No smart contract needed to be created or uh, implemented there. Again, updatable smart contracts, very nice. I think all knows that it can be super hard to build smart contracts where you estimate or you figure out all the features that need to be built in the future. Here we had like the ability to upgrade our smart contracts and incrementally build our product without needing to know every feature in, in the future. Uh, we also got atomic transactions, which is again super fe nice feature for us to have because we're doing split payments. And split payments means you want to say send, uh, for example, you have $10, you want to send uh, $9 to one account and $1 to your own because you take a fee for your transaction and you want both of these transactions to succeed or none of them. Like you don't want to be in this inconsistent state of your transactions. And that also comes out of the box on AVM. Lastly, a few other reasons we loved uh, AVM. Um, opting in on if, uh, Ethereum, you get spammed or on Polygon, you get spammed with a lot of random assets, which is a headache for regular businesses accounting wise. And on AVM, you have to explicitly opt in to receive a specific asset. Uh, we also got uh, the ability to get the balance before and after a transaction, which is useful for account statements for regular businesses. And lastly, we have instant finality. And I think this is a huge advantage for business-to-business -business payments. Um, it can actually cost you an order if you, for example, find out that uh, your money hasn't been received on the other end. And I think this is one of the reasons why uh, Algorand and blockchain really improves uh, the payment systems for businesses uh, in real life. Yeah, so to conclude on all of this, I know it was a lot of bullet points, um, but we really found that EVM created a much higher dev load for us. It had a much higher complexity and security overhead that we had to manage. It was like on our shoulders to build this. And on Algorand, we had less smart contract engineering, which meant less risk, security overhead, and dev load. And we could basically spin up all the functionality we needed uh, in a month. And we had to spend like six months trying to, uh, to do this on EVM in a manner that was super secure. So. Yeah, it was, it was definitely just, uh, I think we developers at least were kind of screaming in the end. And I know <laughs> Stephen was also, he also said this to me the other day. He remembered me being like, please, can we go back to Algorand? <laughs> because uh, it was just for us developers a much better uh, blockchain to build on. And it allowed our resources, which is quite scarce, to, uh, to focus on, on product innovation instead of building or reinventing these essential blockchain features that got just comes with uh, Algorand. Yeah, so I guess that was it. Any questions or? Yeah, 
Here you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about why you chose to build on blockchain in general and not just like a database. Yeah. I think it's a really good question um, because we are also thinking about this even ourselves, like what is the better ledger infrastructure? But again, uh, I know Stefan is from the payment uh, world and he knows how difficult it is to build the things that we want to build. The escrow service having uh, the ability to spin up multiple accounts, uh, doing multi-party transactions and all this on the current payment system. And this just comes with blockchain. And we definitely think that it will be uh, yeah, a much more efficient way to do things. And we also are ready for uh, if real world assets become the things and we can do uh, atomic transactions, having both money and uh, assets on the same uh, ledger. So that's why we are kind of betting on, on blockchain. And I think the transparency uh, really is a big a big factor for us that you can actually see that the money has arrived and you don't have to wait for seven days without knowing where your money are uh, as you have to do on the in the regular payments world. So yeah, that's kind of why we're bidding on it. Yeah. Hmm? Anything to add there? No. No, I think just in general the, the case you said I, I once had to I was buying a summer vacation house. I had to move money into an escrow account, regular lawyer escrow account. I paid in just before Easter and he gave me a wrong account. I waited seven days, then the money was bounced back to me. No one knew where the money were for seven days. And then I lost the house because he didn't have the money in time. And, and these are some of the reasons that we just think blockchain can really help us and businesses in general. Also, we have companies that I need of shipping goods right now. Uh, my wife works in a med medical company where they really need uh, to be able to, uh, Novo Nordisk, we go, I, I guess you heard about it, um, but they really need to get sugar all the time. So they need to give payment statements. Um, and sometimes if you do it on a Friday, you don't, you, you're not able to give it until the Monday, but they need the goods right away. And we can do that with blockchain here. And the cost and the split payouts and all those functionalities going for some of our clients, uh, our payment service providers, they're not able to compete with Stripe Connect, for example, because they, they, they're not allowed to receive the funds and hold them and distribute them. We can do that with our license, and then we can do it with the blockchain software where we just spin up wallets, and we have almost zero cost, which is one of also the reason why Algorand for us as sales guys is super important is because when I go out and talk to clients, I need to know what I'm selling. I can say today it's one euro, maybe tomorrow it's 10 euros. I don't really know. It depends on our cost. And so, yeah, I think that there are some of the reasons. Cool. Any other questions? All right, thank you. <laughs>